G'day, uh, Rick here. I recently received a request about the layout of my Obsidian vault uh, with the appearance of it, etc., as it being a bit of a departure from the normal, and was asked if I could do a bit of a video on how I've set this up. Now, this is not going to be a complete and thorough explanation of all the tricks and bits and pieces that you can use to uh, change the look, of, look and feel of your Obsidian vault but it will certainly give you a bit of an idea about how to do it and I hope that will help you in exploring how you're going to do your own. So let's get into it, shall we? Okay, so on the screen here, you can see that I have Obsidian open. It is in just a training vault for the purposes of demonstrating this, these concepts here. And the theme that's displaying at the moment is the default theme that comes with Obsidian. There is nothing wrong with it. It's a good theme. It's very solid and reliable. But if you want to trick it up and do something different, well, let's let's have a look at what we can do. So if we go down here to our settings and bring them up, you see here that in the appearance under the options, we do have the themes and you can manage your themes from here and install different ones. I've used a few over the time that I've been using Obsidian. Probably the most regular one that I've used has been the Minimal theme, which is which is very powerful and really nice. Uh, then recently I got into another one called Anna Papushin or something or rather like that. I can't pronounce it properly, I'm sure. And then recently I've, uh, I've seen an, another one called Prism, which I really like, and that's the one that I'm going to talk about today. So, here in the themes, we will now select Prism. And you can see that the screen has changed and that it is different. Now, I like the dark theme. That's a matter of preference. There's a lot of people who like the uh, light theme. But personally, I just I like the dark one, probably because of the amount of time that I spend in front of computers. Now, if we go and uh, have a look at the editor view, which is in here, uh, and the default view for new tabs that are opened, you can either have it in reading view, but I have mine in editing view, so that I can edit straight away going onto it, and the default editing mode I have is live preview. Sometimes this plays up. I don't know why, maybe it's my system, but um, it sometimes it plays up, and even though it's in live preview, it's in source mode, and just by flicking them back and forth between source mode and live preview, it fixes the problem. All right, so let's close that down again and see where we're going to next. So installing the prism as a theme, we've done that, and the, the next thing that you'll need to do if you're going to use prism for your theme and the Anna Poochin one is the same uh, is that you need to install a community plugin called style settings so let's have a look at that we go here community plugins make sure they're enabled of course uh, browse type in style settings settings and there it is you can see it's installed there's the options for it it's enabled, of course, and this is a really, really powerful plugin. So when it comes to adjusting the style, just as a little bit of background, all these are is effectively you're modifying what's called the cascading style sheet. Now the style sheets are in the background in the programming, uh, and it basically means that you can change one thing and it will cascade right through everything else. The style settings plugin makes it very easy for you to do that. So the CSS generates the appearance for the entire vault. Everything you set for your H1 tags, for example, will be the same color and size for every H1 tag. So they are made up with CSS. They're made up of a selector, which might be a heading one in Markdown or H1 in HTML. And then there's a declaration following that, which is two parts, so the property, say for example a color and the value of that property which might be say red or blue or green or whatever it might happen to be now that we've covered those bits and pieces it's actually time to get in and start changing the theme 
So I've got to give you some notes here about the style settings that we're going to do. So first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go into the style settings plugin, not the theme itself. The style settings plugin is where all the theme adjustments are made. So if we go down here to our settings, and pull up the style settings, it's there already. And you can see that the prism theme will come up because this, the plugin knows that that theme exists. So the first thing that we're going to do is look at the appearance and you'll see that those all have drop down menus. So we're going to drop into appearance. And the first thing we're going to look at is the accent color schemes and styles. And I'm going to go for the dark theme for the reasons that I said before. And you can see I've got it set here for Raven, but there's a number of others that you can choose from. So if you watch the screen, you'll see the colors change here. If we go to Mocha and there's Indigo, Pine, and you can set your own custom, but I'll just stick with Raven for the time being because it's quite nice and easy. The scheme style, two-tone and border is the one that I like. You can have minimal, which takes all those, those off, but you can play with those and see which ones that you like. The accent style it changes the highlighted tab text. Um, I like it to have the border and to be filled. And the color preset is blue. Uh, you can see that, that this style here is blue, but if I change that back to, I can have it as orange, you can see that they've all changed to orange. It's whatever you want. All right, this is the power of the style settings plugin. Okay, so we've got that done. Let's, let's close the appearances down and have a look at our editor. And with the editor, the first thing that we're going to have a look at is our headers, right? The header font size you can change, but uh, I don't see any need to. They're all on sliders. I'm, I'm quite happy with the size of all the headers, so I just leave them alone. But my header text colors are another matter altogether. Again, into the dark theme, and you can see that the defaults are already set there. Uh, where did we go? Dark theme again. The defaults are the, just the colors that have been set already by the author of the theme. So what we're going to do is to change these text colors from white to a blue, like I've got the rest of it set up in my own vault. So we'll pull all, that, pull all those up again. So we've got all these here ready to go. So in order to find out what colors that you want to use, what I would suggest you do is then go and get a color palette for the colors that you want to set it up for. Save the color palette somewhere in your file system too so that you can refer back to it later. And also you can set up a number of different styles so that if you get sick of the look of Obsidian in one style, just change it, right? So we'll go and have a look at that now. All right, okay. Now what we're going to do is go and get our color palette. And here's one that I prepared earlier, which I'll just drag in. And I've selected the blue one. And this is where you can see that the shades of blue go in decreasing levels. And these codes here are what are called hex codes. Uh, and these are the ones that you need in order to change the, the color palette. Now we'll go into our style settings, our dark theme. We want our headers, header text colors, our dark theme. And we're going to go here and have a look and see the H1, the header, H1 text color preset is set to default. We're going to change that to custom there. And then we can select one from the palette. So what we'll do is pull that up here. I select this one for the H1. Just copy and paste it. Go back to there. And the H1 text color preset is set to custom. Here, H1, the custom text color, click on the black box. You'll see here that it's already highlighted. Control V or Command B and save that. And then we'll close that. And if we go back in here, you can see that the H1 has changed its color. Now, that's the same process for each one of them. I'm not going to go through them all because it'll take too long. What I'll do is I'll drag a copy of my vault in here. And just show you how what it looks like. So this is one, two, three, four, header five, and header six, all done 
by changing those custom colours. And that's all there is to it. You can do the same with bold, bold and italics and that sort of thing. All of the settings are there and that will give you an opportunity to have a different coloured theme. So as I said, there's an enormous range of options and settings that you can play with and tinker with in the style settings. I would encourage you to go through and just experiment with them. You can't really damage anything uh, and enjoy setting up your own colour scheme. Cheers.